Welcome to the End Time Truth Television, the channel for the lovers of truth, for the truth of the end time. So if you are a lover of truth, give us a subscription and God bless you. Shalom. Hello out there. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. God bless you today, wherever you are listening to me from. I bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Quickly, I just want, I wanted to look at this video, the face off between Apostle John Kimani and Apostle Richard Takim has gotten to a level of that that can actually be likened to a conspiracy. Now, there is a convocation in which the issue and the manner and the matter that Richard Takim has raised, the way he raised them, has been discussed should I say, on a national level. And uh, in this way, his brother, a Nigerian brother, was put on seat and he was asked some questions. Now, I'd like you to watch and hear the response that came from the Nigerian preacher who was who these questions was put to. I won't say anything more until at the end of the video when I will be able to ask some questions, actually. I'll be seeing you at the end of this video. Thank you very much and stay blessed. Let's enjoy the video together. It's been a week since Apostle Takim invited Apostle Kimani for an apostolic chat in any national television so that they can confront each other and iron out doctrinal errors. I throw a challenge at you. I'm going to pay for the airtime in any of the media houses in Kenya for two hours. I will pay them. They will host me and you. They will check revelation. And you a background check. Sini kweli. Ajue huyu kemani anatoka wapi? Anaenda wapi? Bring your question. I will bring mine. Listen. This is not Taki. It's not Nigerian. Remove that. Stop hiding in my nationality. Stop hiding in. It's, it's not respecting fathers. I respect fathers. Apostle Kimani unfortunately appears to have used a fellow Nigerian preacher to respond to Apostle Takim, which many will consider a show of spiritual immaturity. So you won't, I don't know what, what tribe is he from? We don't know. Is he? No, 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 you can't do that because we are live. No, okay, so, so anyway, anyway, um, even in the house, uh, tradition respect is also there they will never betray one another Ibos are the same thing so it must be some kind of dysfunction in his upbringing or his education or the fact that he may have been traumatized by somebody in ministry <laughs> So you have to find out the root of his problem because for every visible problem there's a root problem that you have to go to and if he is disturbing the the equilibrium in a wrong way then there's a biblical procedure for it people will go and talk with him if he doesn't do or, or listen then you escalate it and if he doesn't listen then in the kingdom there's seven levels of judgment if you refuse correction at the first level God escalates things to this to the next level so if there's a church problem here yes elders will go and talk to the person if he doesn't if he refuses it goes up to the main pastor if it's not worked with god will hand him over to civil authorities and it goes higher and higher in corinthian church there was a man that was sleeping with his father's wife after they had tried to help the man and he refused to be helped paul had no choice but to hand him over to Satan <laughs> for the destruction of his flesh so that his soul can be saved. 
so let me say it this way if this guy refuses to conform god will deal with him or kick him out period as long as what he is doing is 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 clearly biblically wrong so responding to a question asked by Asunta Juma, who is Apostle Juma's wife, the preachers in Kenya seem to be very disturbed by Apostle Takim's boldness in calling out error. We have a Nigerian young man around and he is really talking and harassing our fathers. My question to you is, I know you are from Nigeria, is it in the order or manner of Nigerian young men to rebuke their fathers. I think that's um, a matter on my heart and I think uh, you, you need to help us so that we know what to do or how to behave because it may be cultural. Pastor T, who was the moderator, lamented how Apostle Takim has not spared anyone erring in doctrine, terming it as a small problem. Well, only a baby can call doctrinal error a small problem. We can say it is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> All of us seated here have encountered a piece or two of his opinion. Yeah, he's claiming that uh, doctrine, doctrine matters. He is correcting doctrine in the country. And, and there is no preacher that is true to according to him. All of them are error and he uses the word they are stupid yeah. and they foolish know. and they need to be schooled uh, because uh, some of them even what they teach is beyond, is below Sunday school. Really? That's just pride and rebellion. Pastor T was also quick to tap into the wisdom of his fathers in another display of feebleness. So we can't permit someone to just come and discredit them and make us look as if we don't have fathers. And the second thing, the Bible says the sons are the one who contend for the fathers at the gates. So I believe this is not, it does not need the fathers. We are there. It is a small matter. The We'll sit there so that the whole Kenyans will watch us as we examine scriptures. I am challenging you for an apostolic chat on air. Not in a closet so that we will not see. We will stand in the whole world. Let them watch us. And I will confront whatever you are doing. And you confront whatever I am doing. Then we bring the Bible and check. I throw a challenge at you. I'm going to pay for the airtime in any of the media house in Kenya for two hours. Hello, you're welcome back and thank you for listening. Thank you for staying around. The question I have is actually how come that this whole thing has become a national concern? How is it that uh, this is such a concern to them that all of them, you know, had to make this a topic of discussion? A topic of discussion on a national uh okay in a very big meeting like that because i'm not sure if it was a national thing but it was definitely a very huge gathering and that actually shows that the man kimani has his own followership now i, I I'm, I'm just looking at it because you know ma making such a huge discussion is in a way inciting some kind of hate and maybe violence since takim has been uh, they have threatened him in the past uh in the recent past with expulsion yeah okay uh, what, what is it called now deportation i watched them on national tv sidebar that day and you know the kind of hate that they manifested towards the young man you know was out of this world and that was not it you know it wasn't a place where attacking brought them a kind of to to discuss them but that was a, a discussion that centered on politicians the preachers and the church should the politicians bring their government money the public fund that they have looted from government to the churches to be sanctified to sanctify the money they are loot in the church and the only apostle Taki stood differently now so this is where the concept of spiritual fatherhood 
becomes very, very abused. This is where it becomes idolatrous. The concept of spiritual fatherhood, like what the young man there was saying, you know, that means that they would actually meet Apostle Takim on the gate, at the gate, as the Bible said. And we don't know the nature that this kind of meeting would actually assume. You see, Takim may have stepped on many tools. There is no doubt about that. Uh, because of his vociferous nature. He speaks with power. He speaks with you know, loud voice. And some persons say that he shouts. Some persons have even said that he's not a Christian because of the way, you know, he is speaking. You know, but the, the fact is that something is at stake. Apostle Takim has something that he is trying to defend. He has something that is convinced that is being eroded. And you and I, if you are actually a child of the kingdom, you would know, not just because of Kimani, not just because of Muriki, the one that you you, you know you understand. This thing is everywhere. And the Takim has not just spared anybody. Anyone that runs foul of what he sees is not, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, biblical. Anybody that crosses the boundary, according to his knowledge of the scripture, I mean, according to his knowledge of the scripture, according to his own knowledge of the scripture, he has not spared anybody. So, so with this kind of national gathering, I, I want to ask, is it that important? Is there anything that is at stake that if Takim is not stopped, the Kenyan church would go in for it? The churches in Kenya would suffer for it? Is there anything like that that is so much um, important to this young and old ministers that they had to bring this issue to this point you know to find out from a nigerian if this is how nigerians behave the the question now is to find out or to ask whose interest are they representing whose interest are they representing both takim kimani and the people on his side whose interest are they, are they representing if this is about the gospel if this is about the kingdom, then I do not really think that it is necessary to have this kind of, you know, two camps. I remember in the Bible that Apostle Paul and Brother Barnabas had sharp disagreement. Paul said, we won't go with Mark because of his negligence. And Barnabas said, we must go with John Mark. And Paul said, no. Barnabas said no. And so Paul chose Silas and Barnabas chose Mark. And the two of them went their separate ways. And there was no, the Bible didn't record that there was a council that was called for them. Even if there was a council that was called for them, I think it would have been to foster peace amongst them. So the thing is, whose interests are they representing? Could Takim be dealing with plurality of elements who for the gain of the things he was getting from the politicians of his time, you know, be attacked. In, in the Bible, in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 13, if you read verses 1 and 2, there was a certain bar Jesus who was also man of God. And you know, we have so many men of God today. So that guy too was a man of God. And he was an obstruction to the gospel. Now, he was obstructing the gospel because Paul came and was preaching the gospel. And he knew that if the man he was speaking to receives Jesus Christ, his business of manipulation ends. And so could it be that there, there are so many elements in Kenya that understands that if they don't stop Takim on time, he is going to spoil a lot of things. And I guess maybe he has already started spoiling things for them. And so... Hence, this campaign to stop him at all costs. And you see, the issue that they keep on using this Nigerian background, Nigeria, reminding everybody that this guy is not a Kenyan. I mean, it, it is absurd. It is unbecoming of, of ministers. I mean, if we should begin to have this kind of discrimination in the body of Christ, so-called, are we going to have a different heaven for individuals now these are my questions you know people say um that attacking should have gone to kimani in the private to 
speak with him in the private. Number one is that having seen that debate I saw on, on that television, Takim is like uh, a cancer to them all and they wouldn't actually want to touch him even with a long spoon. And besides, what was done was done in the open. It, is, it was done in the, in the open and everybody saw it. And these days of social media, you know, whether you like it or not, if it was in the days where so, when social media was not around, anybody can say anything in his congregation. Takim was actually preaching to his congregation. He was speaking to them not to believe that thing, not to practice that thing that they saw. And that is what me, I see there. He was telling them that thing you saw was an open chariot. You shouldn't, you shouldn't be part of it. So telling them that, social media definitely carried it. And that, that was how we got to know about it. So him going to meet, meet him would have been normal if there was a relationship between them at all. But with what I have seen and with what I am seeing, there was no relationship. And Takim, you know, is doing his own thing based on his own conviction. And Kimani and the rest are doing their own based on their own conviction. So how do you talk to a man like that who has been elevated to the rank of the fathers? You know, he told uh, Takim that um, you don't insult the fathers of the land. So he has been elevated to the point of being the father. From the things I have seen, even those that have made comments under the, you know, the video that I uploaded here, uh, Kimani happens to be a very popular figure in Kenya. You know, I'm not a Kenyan, so we follow these things on social media. And from every response, even from ministers and the followers, he, he's looking like a man that has been elevated to the position of a demigod. So it would be almost impossible for a small boy, like they will refer to Takim, to come and bring an idea that he would buy. You know, that, that debate on that national TV where, I, I, you know, I think I remember Bishop Muriti and, uh, oh my God, I've forgotten the names of the other two, the, the other two bishops that were there. Uh, if you only need to watch that video again, I wish I did here. You only need to watch that video again. If you do, then you will understand what I am saying, that there is this kind of hate. And on that, you know, discussion too, they brought about the issue of his nationality. They brought, they reminded him that he was not a Kenyan. And so when they talk, he should listen. Now, wh when you come to uh, the, the man that spoke, the guest speaker, the guest speaker spoke like a man, like a natural man. He spoke like a man that was natural, not as a man that was inspired. Now, understand that I am not taking sides and I'm not being biased. But I am looking at this thing from the ground of the gospel being preached. It is quite natural and I think acceptable that people can differ in opinion. People can, people should be able to, you know, offer what they are convinced of. Takim is convinced that using shadows, using using things, materials, is not of God. It is it is type. And when Jesus, you know, came, he literally, you know, made some, some more of these things obsolete. Now, there are scriptures that some of these people are projecting that permits for the usage of oil, for the usage of handkerchief and all that. But if you also see that these things have been demonized, these things have been turned into something different, then you will see reasons with him. And so when the, the, you know, the guy, the Nigerian that they were speaking with came, you don't expect him to speak anything different from what he was going to say because he was on a show as a guest, uh, you know, minister. He was being hosted and his host were the persons, you know, people throwing the questions at him. And he, as, as a man, natural man, as a man that is natural, definitely he will speak up, you know, for those that have invited him. Now, even Balaam would have done so. Balaam would have done so. You see, Balaam was invited by Balak to come and curse the people of God. Even when Balaam knew that it was not even the will of God, yet he went. He went and he was willing to curse these people. And that was why he, he tried every means and built several altars to see if God can be, can be bribed for him to curse the people. 
So he was a natural man until the Lord rebuked him. The Lord rebuked him and told him what he must say. Even, even while he was on his way, his ass could see. His ass spoke and the prophet was blind. So in this you know, case, bringing in the Nigerian to, you know, to find out if that is how Nigerians are, of course, uh, Takim has not actually done anything wrong. He may have stepped on, on toes, like I said. But the question is, whose interests are they protecting? Is Takim protecting the interest of the gospel, the interest of the body of Christ? Is what he is saying contrary to the, the scripture? Now, is uh, Kimani and the rest of them, are they, are they running contrary of the scripture? Are there things that they have done that is actually contrary to the word of God? Are they cleansing politicians' money? Because I think this is actually the bone of contention. This is why every Kenyan preacher, you know, that doesn't agree with Takim would want to. It's like what is happening in Nigeria here. You know, Jeremiah Omoto Fufeng, Suleiman, and, uh, you know, others. They have, they have been in the news on social media for certain things that are not too good. You don't hear any of these other senior pastors speak at least say words about it if it is to advise them now somebody may say that if they advise them will i know i wouldn't know maybe i wouldn't know but how come creflo dollar said something about height already you hear some of them immediately reacting and saying things about so how come it is when when the thing that generally affects them is spoken that is when you will hear some of them speaking out but when it has to do with something that will affect not them but the church no nobody speaks up nobody says anything you know i don't know anything so i'm just asking question i'm just asking question so my take on this is that the kenyan people should take it easy if we are christians christianity has no has no race christianity has no gender Christianity is Christianity. If we are body of Christ, members of the body of Christ, rather, let us deal in love. If Apostle Takim is stepping on toes and people feel that he has been doing, I think I actually love what, what the man said, that the guest, I think I love what the man said. Maybe that will make them to go to organize a party, to raise a party that will go and talk to Takim. And Takim now will be able to explain to them, hey, it's not as, as if I hate you. It's not as if I am arrogant. I am not proud. I'm just trying to speak up the things I see that is happening in the church that is not normal. It is happening in my country, Nigeria, and I am here too, and I see that this thing is happening here. That, that This is what I'm speaking about. And probably from there, they will take it up. Probably from there, you know, there will be a kind of a body that will be created to shakemate wrong that is being done in the body of Christ. Because the problem is that the, the Christian church has no regulation. Everybody is doing whatever he likes. Whatever you are convinced of, anything you think you can do, that is what everybody is just set on doing whatever thing that he his mind has told him to do. And so nobody shakes them. Well, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Let me know what you think about the video. Thank you very much. Till I come your way again in the next video, I remain your brother in the Lord. And from me to you, Shalom.